my name is Davinia Taylor, and I'd like to introduce you to the wonderful world of biohacking. Basically, I'm a mother of four, I've been overweight, I've been an active alcoholic, I've been depressed, but right now I am none of those except being a mother of four. And I want to share some of my secrets and discoveries that all of you can access. So tonight I'm going to do a live Q&A and just answer any questions you feel like throwing at me. And I'm going to answer things like my favourite reads, my favourite supplements, and how these rather geekish looking glasses can help me have a great night's sleep. So welcome to Biohacking. Let's crack on. I want to say thank you for joining me and I want to fly through as many questions as possible. I'm going to keep glancing up to make sure that we've, um, we're all answering as many things as we possibly can because this is an opportunity to just get to the nitty gritty and cut out the middlemen and all that chit chat. Right, okay, so I took a few, um, I took a few uh, questions from the posts uh, I did the other day, so I'm just going to fly through them in order. So excuse my eyes down, I just want to make sure I cover everything. Okay, so my top three books and websites. Right, so I, I have three books here that I absolutely love. This one, and I'm trying to get him to, I want to interview him. This is called The Hacking of the American Mind. And it literally tells you how we become addicted and how it's, it's hormonal. And basically, I love this book. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and get the author on and, and we can pick his brain, actually. He is brilliant, but this is a fantastic read. If you're ever interested in what kids eat, in how you behave, this is brilliant. The Hacking of the American Mind. And it also tells you how your dopamine pathways and your serotonin pathways work in conjunction with each other it's superb another book I would really recommend is Catherine Shannon's Deep Nutrition now this is the book that really spelt it out to me about good and bad fats basically you've got in a nutshell you've got your good fats which are your extra virgin olive oil your avocado oil uh, your coconut oil uh, and your animal fats. So even stuff off bacon and goose fat and even lard is great for cooking in. And then you've got your nasty fats and that's what this pointed out to me, your margarines and your veg oils and your seed oils. Basically, they were all made for machinery. So when we, when we eat them, they cause such an inflammatory response. Basically, it's like consuming a trans fat. So. If you could say you, 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 you go into McDonald's or something like that, the problem isn't per, the potato that you're eating, that chip, or the chicken nugget per se. Even though it's not organic and it's got bread wrapped around it, it's this toxic oil they fry it in. So that's why I'm a huge advocate of, if I am gonna have crisps, I'll make sure they're cooked in extra virgin olive oil. Don't get me wrong, it's not gonna be great, but that fat needs to be mitigated as much as, problem, as, as possible. And I, I'd say in the next 20, maybe less, in the next 10 years, there will be a ban on those polyunsaturated fats. You remember margarine, Vitalite and everything that had all that, it's heart healthy, it's low cholesterol. It is utter lies. So whatever you do, when you buy something in a packet, spin it round, look for sunflower oil, look for rapeseed oil. Even if it's organic, it's still going to get inside you. It shouldn't be inside you. And it's going to turn to a trans fat. It's going to make you fat. It's also gonna make your brain slower and it's gonna block up your arteries around your heart, not to mention all the other organs and your poor liver's gonna be knackered. That is brilliant, okay? It's a bit of a heavy go, but it's really, really good and it will just alert you to so many problems in society's diet at the moment. Now, another one is this monster. I know it's a bit biblical. Okay, so if you want to follow a guy, I mean, the thing is with biohacking, it's all very male orientated. That's why I've been sort of slogging my way through it. I'm trying to mitigate it for us girls. But men love this. It's really macho, but it's got invaluable information for us women in as well. So this guy's called Ben Greenfield. He is really up there with the best biohackers in the world. If you follow him, you will just see his body is so ripped. He's like, I don't know, 6% body fat, something like that. He's hitting 40 and he's got 
uh, at the metabolic age of like a 10 year old or something. I mean, he spends hundreds of thousands of pounds on himself, but he does loads of research and some of it's quite extreme, but he's super interesting to follow. His wife, who I'd love to chat to actually, she makes sourdough, she does all the baking for them. They've got two 10 year old twin boys. They go hunting and they just have the most insane life. They've even taken the kids out of school, homeschooling. How they freaking cope with that, I don't know. After the past two weeks, I'm like, take them off me but anyway each to their own but these guys eat very paleo and that's what i've discovered eating a sort of paleoithic way so rolling it back to great grandmother seems to be the best way to lose weight so it's putting in good fats including animal fats saturated fats make you feel full and they taste frigging nice you tell me anyone who doesn't like bacon and cutting out those carbs the carbs, the pasta, the bread, unless it's sourdough, and even then, be careful. If you want to lose weight, be careful. Um, definitely always try and follow a paleoithic lifestyle. So always be aware of things in boxes. They've got great cereals that are paleo, so it's convenient as well. Just look out for that paleo sign. Right, so I was saying that biohacking is predominantly male. Of course it is. It started off in like the bodybuilding industry and they were like the original biohackers. But there's a woman called Grass Fed and Biohack. She's pregnant at the moment. She's got a really nice Instagram. She does re she's super healthy and she's always obviously considering the baby as well. So she does it quite softly. She's a brilliant one to follow. And another one is the Food Babe. She is brilliant at highlighting all the crap on labels. So she will sort of teach you, she's based in America, so you can really see how bad the American diet is. Hi Jude. You can see how bad the American diet is compared to Europe's, but it will actually give you the words that you need to understand, you need to look at. Oh Jude, careful. The crew I have. Um, so yeah, so basically she does lists, she, do, she does lists of what ingredients shouldn't be in our food and she's a really good one to look at. She's got a couple of books out, she's got a blog, she's called The Food Babe. Right, okay. Um, oh, and by the way, follow my mate Tim Biohacker. He's British, so he understands what we can get in our country as well. He is probably one of the biggest biohackers in the UK. He certainly has got the best sort of like summit. It's every September. It's called the Health Optimization Summit. He's more health than biohacking because biohacking can be a bit extreme, like me. But they have an amazing, it was at uh, Olympia and I went to it last year and they have the most incredible people on display. It's, it's worth checking out anyway. And just from a seal of approval to, to know you're not getting ripped off, he's done all the due diligence on the people who display there. And it's, it's an incredible event actually. Okay, right, belly fat. Okay, so belly fat can be a number of things. It could be your cortisol, which is your fight or flight. So if you sort of like get into a panic or get super stressed, your body is gonna go, <gasps> we're under attack, hold on to the fat just in case we need it. And women, obviously, we hold on to it around our reproductive areas, around our belly. So if you are in a state of stress, if you're stressed at work, stressed with the kids, and you're not de-stressing, you could be in a chronic state of high cortisol. And of course, you've got to learn how to de-stress. I would take rhodiola, that's a really good one. I'd also get a spike mat. I know it sounds a bit weird, but it does help you balance your hormones. And remember, I'm not medical, I'm not endorsed by anybody, so I'm not selling anything. This is all stuff that I've tried. And because I'm not medical, I've not had to learn a certain sort of avenue that's been ticked off in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. This is stuff I've come across as I've been a ridiculous purchaser. I'm a consumer and I've also been, you know, depressed. So I kind of have navigated my way through this and I don't want you to go through all the expense and bloody time wasting I've done. So you've got the rhodiola, which is a herb and that can reduce cortisol levels. Also get a spike mat. I find a sauna is just brilliant because it kind of takes you out of your mind because you're concentrating on staying in there because you're sweating so much and so there's something about that sweat that can reduce that stress I don't know what it is but it works for me so I was a bit PMT the other day and I really miss getting in the sauna and sweating so I just did a long run now that's not for everyone because some people just hate running 
Another reason why you might have belly fat is because of estrogen as well. So tomorrow I'm bringing Pippa on again to talk about hormones specifically because it is so complex, I need an expert in there. Now I hold a tiny bit of belly fat around, around the bottom here and I've, I've always had it ever since I've been a kid and I think it could be my inability to detox estrogen. I hold on to it, I recycle it, which makes it a bit toxic for me. So it could be one of those two things and the way you can get rid of that. It's obviously taking a supplement called DIM, which is made from vegetables. And this is by the Allergy Research Group. So you take two of these a day, or sometimes up to four. I've had a Dutch panel test, and I'm actually taking too much of it, so I need to bring it down. I mean, it's so complicated, but these are all things you can try and they're not gonna harm you because it's made of vegetables and you know, it's worth at least, you feel a bit more empowered when you're doing something. Um, and another way to get rid of belly fat, would you believe, is not running at all, um, it's walking. So when, um, for example, Remember bodybuilders back in the day. So if you ever went to a gym years ago and you and the people were pumping up to like work out, uh, to, to, to do shows, you know, like bodybuilding shows. So they have a minute amount of body fat. You'd never see a bodybuilder run because that would peak their cortisol and make them retain fat. If you want to see a bodybuilder cut fat, you will see them on an incline walking for hours. Now, what I recommend is, I, I always have to have music on when I'm doing something. That's how I operate. I just basically, I get my emails in front of me on my phone. I tune into some like disco music because it's a really good tempo. Like Sister Sledge and everything like that. You know, like a little bit happy, a little bit cheesy, but hey, I am. And then I will get on an incline and I'll start off at about four, 4% 4 incline at about five kilometers an hour. And as my body warms up, and the oxygen starts getting to every single muscle in my body, you'll realize you can go up a bit higher and you can probably go a bit faster as your body gets the So always sort of work up to it. And remember, it's the length of time that you're working. You know, if you're gonna do a HIIT class, that's totally different, that's cardiovascular. I mean, most of you here are saying, help me lose weight, I'm 40 odd. This is the best way to do it. It's not about going <laughs> like that because that, that doesn't help you. I mean, it'll get you fitter, but it'll probably put you under stress. You'll probably friggin' hate it and dread it. But if you're on that treadmill, on an incline, even if it's at 1%, it's gonna work your glutes a bit more. And your glutes are what? The biggest muscle in your body. So by activating them, you're instantly burning more calories. It is a fabulous way to pass an hour and just try and do 5K in an hour. That's it, 5K in an hour and just see what you can go up and down to. Some days you might feel like, you know, taking it right up to blooming 12% gradient or whatever, but other days you might only feel like doing 2%, but just get out there and walk on that gradient. As, even if it's a half percent, just do it because you're gonna engage your glutes and you're gonna burn far more efficiently. And that's what it's all about, cutting out the time. Okay, right, kids' food, okay. Oh my God, it's a nightmare, it's an ongoing battle. But because I've read this, and because I've read this, I have the motivation not to give my kids crappy food because I know what I went through with addiction. I know what sort of body image I had when I was overweight and it was torture. So I'm not gonna pass that on to them by giving them an addiction to carby foods. So we predominantly eat meat and addiction to sugar because it's more addictive than cocaine. And I reckon again, about 20 years, it will be banned. You won't see it in supermarkets like you do now. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a whole sort of like live Insta about this with a specialist who uh, deals with children who have ADHD and just children with 
with whatever issues and we will get to the bottom of what we should be feeding them. And I can guarantee you it's not pasta and sugary sauce. I can guarantee you it's going to be really good fats because that's what feeds the brain. And that's what I'm all about. I want kids with like a balance. I've got one kid with a little bit suspected ADHD. Well, he has. And I'm just like, what do I feed him? Because he craves sugar like mad. And... You know, we've got to like, I've got to put things in place now to make his life as a teenager easier. I mean, my 11 year, my 12 year old is really tricky because he's already had that influence of his grandparents, influence of me when I didn't know, influence from his dad. And you know, I mean, you could put it down to naivety, lack of education, but because I know what I know now, it hurts me to give kids food that I know is ultimately messing up the gut microbiome and stimulating parts of the brain that are going to get damaged. Anyway, we'll do a massive, massive chat about that and we'll come up with loads of nice recipes and ideas that are quick because as you might know, I frigging hate tidying up kitchens and I hate cooking and all that and chopping stuff. It drives me mad. Okay, right. Um... Celery juice. Yes, right. Okay, so you know the old medical medium. He made a fortune out of those books. Right. Basically, this guy, very sort of LA, he, um, he can speak to a spirit and he advises people on what they should and shouldn't eat and if they've got cancer just by speaking through this spirit guide, which is all very nice, extremely woo-woo. But I read the book and some of it's, re it's really interesting. I mean, who am I to say he's not got a bloody spirit guide? You know, I know I've not anyway. Um, so, um, hang on one second. Da -da -da -da. So basically, um, the medical medium put celery juice out in the, uh, the universe and basically made it to be an all cure, uh, a cure oil, all um, sort of drink that you have to drink every day on an empty stomach. So I started trying it just out of interest. What I find with celery juice is, I certainly don't believe it's gonna cure cancer. I don't believe it's gonna cure you from liver disease or anything like that. But I do find it's really good sort of laxative so if you have a bit of constipation, try it. It has so many minerals in it, so it is really, really hydrating. And I think that's why so many people feel brilliant on it, because of those amazing minerals you get in organic celery. So it's like probably going out and buying a ton of brilliant high quality electrolytes and just drinking them all. So that celery juice for me is really, really, really hydrating, which is great for your skin, great for all your organs. I mean, I'll have it um, probably just to break a fast. So at about four o'clock, I'll have a pint of it. Not every day because I find, again, I find it a right hassle to tidy up. But if I do feel, I, d I mean, I don't necessarily feel dehydrated, but I'd say I do it once a week just to make sure I'm getting those minerals in me if I don't have electrolytes or something, because it is cheap. It's not the most convenient to use a juicer, but it does work. So it's all about hydration. Another really good biohack, actually, when it comes to hydration is um, drinking water in a gel format. So that's H2O2. So as you would find in a cactus, or in an aloe vera, or in the hump on a camel's back, which is gel and water and fat. The best way to get yourself hydrated without feeling like a frigging racehorse, having to go to the toilet and we Niagara Falls at two in the morning and thus disturb your sleep, is to get some chia seeds and you grind them up in a pestle and mortar, add some water and um, just let it turn to a gel. So it's like about that much and drink that. Now that gel can get into your cells far more efficiently and you won't flush out all the minerals that you've got in your body already. It'll stick to your cells. So instead of just, you know, like on Love Island, they're always drinking water and it annoys me because I'm like, well, well, stop it. You're not even that thirsty. But anyway, that's a, another bugbear. But you know how kids are always drinking this water? Well, they're actually just going to flush out the minerals that they've got in their body, thus rendering them dehydrated. So try the gels, try the chia seeds, because they're super cheap, grind them up in a pestle and water. I mean, I'm talking about uh, about four tablespoons full. Now this is me, I always go over the top, so try three. And then just about that much water, drink it down. It's not the nicest thing in the world, but it saves you getting up in the middle of the night weeing, which we all want sleep, don't we? Okay, ah, heartburn, right. Okay, so, 
Heartburn. Basically, people think that heartburn is caused by too much acid, and it's not. It is caused by gas in the gut pushing the acid up. Now then, there is a really, a brand that I trust that Tim Biohacker mentioned to me, and they are called Bio, uh, the, the, sorry, the Bio Optimizers. They're these, but th this isn't the one I'm on about. Um, it's Bio Optimizers HCL, Stomach Acid and Digestion Support. That will help you digest all that gas so the acid doesn't come up in the first place and you don't need to keep taking all those antacids, which are really bad for you and incidentally one of the biggest selling drugs on the planet. Um, because you do need that acid. You need that acid to break down the food. So it's a kind of like parody really that you're trying to take the acid out when actually you need more acid in your stomach to break down the food that's causing the gas in there and you know what i probably have some digestive enzymes as well because there must be something in your body that's not breaking down the food that's causing all that gas anyway i need loads of enzymes i'm not good at breaking down food so i mean these are one of the best things in the world these great 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 clean brand okay Bone broth. Right, so I swear by bone broth um, for healing gut. I swear by bovine and chicken for gut health and internal health. Um, but like most of you have said to me, sometimes it doesn't turn to jelly and it doesn't and I don't know why. I mean, I've got a friend, Nicola, who gets the best bone broth every time. She has got it down to a science. But I just get really pissed off that one week it's watery, the next week it's so jelly and fabulous. But I know if I have boiled those bones for 12 hours that I have got the nutrition I'm after and that is what it's about. So as long as the bones are organic and you've boiled them down and you've put the apple cider vinegar in, don't worry about it. Just get it down your neck, get it into the kids' bolognese sauce, Get it into it wherever you can and just make sure you have it as many times as you possibly can in a day, particularly if you're healing your gut. If you've got bloating, if you've got diarrhea, if you've got constipation, there's something wrong here. And if you've got brain fog, it's your gut. So if you feel a bit gormless after you've eaten something, odds are it's your gut. So get a load of bone broth down you before you eat each meal, at least for two weeks. I know it's a hassle, I know it's a hassle, but so is having friggin' brain fog. I tell you what I'd do though, I'd go for Planet Paleo. If you can't be bothered doing all the hassle of like the pots, the pans, the smells, Planet Paleo do a really nice, no frills tub of organic grass fed bone broth and they have it in all different flavors. I have the herb one because it goes well with gravy. So if I'm gonna have a roast dinner, I'll use bone broth as the base of the gravy, if that makes sense. I'll also just drink it like a cup of soup. It's not a cup of soup, it doesn't taste anything as nice as a cup of soup because it doesn't have sugar in, but it'll do. And I just, I just, it's so easy to just take out the cupboard. It lasts forever, part about this big. They're not cheap, but price per serving it actually is. There's another really nice organic bone broth company called Ossa. Now they're on a cardo. I don't know if you've got to wait till July to get a cardo, but have a Google of Ossa Organic. They've got these little pots as well that is like so like triple concentrated bone broth, like a pure gel that you can just plop into any sauce or pop into a cup, put a little bit of warm water on, melt it and drink it. Trust me, that is the best way to heal your gut, bone broth. Now then, if you wanna have great skin, that's where marine collagen comes in. Don't know why, but that's what makes our skin and hair. And that's what all, I mean, in fact, I'm interviewing a lady who did a, a test, she's a doctor, she's a scientist, and she found that it was marine collagen that she had the most results with when it came to skin health and getting actual collagen in your skin, your face, your hair, your nails. Again, I just go for Planet Paleo. They've got a marine collagen that tastes of nothing and you can just put it in your coffee if you want to or put it in a smoothie, just get it down you. Um, another great one is Hunter and Gather. They have got bovine peptides. They taste of nothing. They're in a big sack like this, big white powder and you just chuck it in put that in your smoothie, put it, put it in anything sweet, anything savory, and it'll just dissolve and you'll get in that gut health. So bovine and chicken, great for your gut. Marine fish, 
for your face, your hair, your nails. Now then, if you're vegan or vegetarian, it's gonna be trickier. It is gonna be trickier, and if it's for ethical reasons, I totally get you, I can't talk you out of it, but you're gonna have to spend a lot more money and probably have a lot more synthetic ingredients. However, Ancient and Brave have got a really nice brand called Collagen, Collagen YN. So it's a sort of, it's a fake collagen. I think they've used um, marine collagen, which is a lovely ingredient. But again, I don't know how fast it's gonna work, particularly if you're healing your gut, because I've only personally gone down the hardcore, I've got to get out this brain fog, I've got to lose some weight, I've got to stop having leaky gut and bloating, I'm sick of looking pregnant. I love the bovine, thanks. So for me, I'd always go for that because my health's the most important thing, because if I'm not well, the kids aren't well, blah, blah, blah. But if you are adamant to be vegan or vegetarian, have a look at Ancient and Brave and it's beautiful packaging as well. Because I mean, let's face it, I'm a consumer. Right, uh, SPF. Okay, so I don't wear SPF at all. Um, I haven't done since I was a kid. My mum used to chase me around, like trying to spray it on me and I never put it on me. But um, my kids, uh, they don't wear it either unless they're out all day. Obviously the sun can be dangerous if they're gonna burn. So in that case, I would just use zinc. That's it, zinc or a t-shirt. And we don't go out in the midday sun because we're probably having lunch anyway. And so the beginning of the day is great for them. Have them run around in that early morning sun. It's got certain UV rays that are really good for them. Great for their energy, great for their circadian rhythm. And the same in the evening as the sun goes down, it kicks in their melatonin as well. So I use the sun as a tool. I'm not frightened of the sun. I'm not scared of skin cancer. I mean, for me, SPF, uh, if you're gonna sit out there and bake, you're probably gonna get burned, but I just, prob I just use a, an umbrella or in, out, in, out until my skin acclimatized. And um, I think Hawaii are banning it because of some of the nasty ingredients that the big, Pharma pharmaceutical companies have used it's killed the coral reef down there and I think the same is happening in Australia so I'd always go for like Jason's have got a really nice organic one and they do a total block but you're looking for zinc really it's like what the surfers used to use you know that that block stuff or, or like snowboarders you know uber cool man but um yeah zinc's fine but anything else I'm a bit why is it in there and I think that my skin if god if i can absorb magnesium in a bath like that i can certainly absorb about 50 ingredients on the back of a, a l'oreal bloody spf i just find it really hard to believe that everyone everywhere every day no matter what the weather's like has to slap on spf when the sun's been around a lot longer than us and skin cancer's on the increase I think it's something we're eating, it's something we're doing that's not quite right. Personally, I'm not a fan of SPF. Um, do, what you, do what you want with that, but protect your kids with zinc rather than all the other nasty ingredients and the perfumes and everything. It's just, I just think our skin's too, too much a powerful sponge not to have to take those toxins on board. And to be honest, my liver, it's got to deal with all sorts of different environmental issues the last thing it needs is for me to be smothering on more stuff for it to have to detox because it'll probably end up making me have belly fat as well because my poor liver can't take the detox so just remember everything you put on you your liver's got to detox so if you want to be super lean just cut out the, the the shit your liver's got to do all the time it's like a, it's called the rain barrel effect the more toxins or toxic load or toxic food or food and drink and environmental pollutants that you put in your body, you absorb, you breathe in, you put on your skin, your liver's still got to detox that. So it's not just got carbs to worry about, it's got everything else. So to just take that load off your liver and watch your belly fat diminish. Okay, sleep, right. First of all, blue blockers. These are um, blue blocks. It's a nice Aussie company. Basically, um, blue light does interfere with my sleep. So I try and put those on at about nine o'clock at night because I'm a bit of a Netflix fan and I can just stare at the telly till stupid o'clock. That'll sort of make me feel more tired by about half 11. If I've not got those glasses on, I can crack on till two. 
Do you know what I mean? That blue light, because it's a bit like morning light, it increases cortisol. So those blue blockers are really good, particularly if you work in an office. You, you don't have to have this wacky color. You can just have them completely clear and they just look like regular glasses. You don't have to look like, oh, actually I look like Marge Simpson now. Um, so yeah, you don't have to have the yellow glasses. The reason why I have yellow glasses is because I tend to get SAD. So when I see a heavy sky like today, I sort of get this feeling, this down feeling. So I uh, put these on and it tricks my brain into thinking that there's sunlight and I get a bit of a lift. Um, another trick for sleep is the spike mat. I know people are like, what? But there's something about it. Basically, you lie on your spike mat 20 minutes and because you've got all these spikes here, which is like a pretty sensitive part of your body, your body will think it's under attack and it will send out you know, those signals, help, help, help. And then when it realizes you're okay, it sort of sends out the calming hormones. Like, you know, you like sort of oxytocin, you feel all lovely and everything, and you'll just calm down and you'll feel your back pulsate as the circulation increases. So it's literally like having a massage before you go to sleep. It's really good if you're super stressed or you just need 20 minutes out in the day, do that. But it, I, I actually watch the telly on it and I get the pillow as well, because I sometimes get headaches there. I think it's from doing that. Another really nice sleep supplement I've come across, I like this brand actually, is called Honor, and they've got a new supplement called Dream On. Now in this, you've got your magnesium. Magnesium helps you relax. So a friend of mine was taking magnesium during, in the daytime, a doctor said for restless leg syndrome, and I'm like, God, no wonder you're knackered. You're bloody half asleep, you're ready for bed. So she takes it at night now, and that helps with a restless leg. This has also got, uh, ashwagandha in which is an adaptogen so it calms you down if you're a little bit wired but also if you're a little bit dopey it'll pick you up um, it has uh, some B vitamins it's got zinc in um, blah, 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 and it's got L-theanine and this one's got GABA in now in the UK we're not allowed GABA and that I think it's really good actually I don't know someone obviously must have taken too much of it and killed themselves the usual knobhead behavior but GABA um, you can get it online and if you take too much of it it makes you feel a bit breathless but um, it's it's a real relaxant um, but when on a do theirs in the UK they're not allowed to put GABA in it just to let you know so I definitely have magnesium at night I have 5-HTP as well which is a precursor to serotonin which is the happy hormone so we wake up happy yay I will wake up happy I was about to say oh no school run I can't wait for the bloody school run um, but yeah because I've got like that slightly depressive mentality I always try and give my got that extra support to make a bit more <clears throat> a bit more serotonin so I wake up happy and everyone has a better day sorry I don't know what I've drunk another great thing to get to sleep that <coughs> Matthew swears by is the Wim Hof breathing method I might do it tomorrow actually I'll do a pose because it only takes like about one minute to do and it's a really good way to alkalize your body uh, which obviously is really good for you because an acidic body is a tense body and it's, it's, it's just bad. But you can alkalize your body and also when you do the holding of the breath and um, you sort of breathe back in again, you get like this trippy feeling and it is, it's a bit like, well actually it's the same chemical that they put in LSD. So there's that part of your brain that activates. So when you go to sleep, you have a really good REM sleep. Now, REM is super important for us guys, particularly as we get older. I know all about my REM because I've got this aura ring and it'll tell me how much deep sleep and how much REM sleep I'm having. The reason why I'm obsessed with REM sleep is it's rapid eye movement. movement. So not only is it resting your brain and helping everything connect and you know growing your brain and making sure you know starving you off from alzheimer's and these horrific diseases that we're, we've got cropping up another reason to alkalize your body but um rem sleep is when you go into ketosis your body switches into fat burning mode while you're sleeping 
which is good, isn't it? So if you are not getting enough REM sleep, i.e. you've not prepared yourself for bed properly, you've been watching too much telly, or you've not put your blue blockers on, you've not lay on your spike mat, you've not done your Wim Hof, and you've not got some serious supplements down you to get you into that REM sleep, you're missing out on a great opportunity to fat burn. Your body literally burns fat while it's sleeping. And it's also, that's another reason, because your brain can work on fat. I mean, do you know, if you have like a carby meal, you feel a bit brain foggy. But if you have a fatty meal, you don't. Your brain carries on. Because your brain runs on fat. It's made of fat, like 75% fat. So basically that ketosis stage is great for your brain and it's great for your belly fat as well. Now, we all know our sleep diminishes as we get older. So it's ri- that I think that could be the reason why we find it so difficult to lose weight as we get older. It's not our metabolism slowing down or anything like that. I think we're just getting crap at, at sleep. So whatever you do, make sleep your number one priority. E- oh, even over and above all the friggin' exercise and everything, get sleeping. Get one of these aura rings for Christmas or whatever. I got mine for Christmas. And really invest in your sleep. Uh, I used to have it on my Apple Watch, but it doesn't tell you REM. But my friend who uses her Apple Watch to track her, she says if she has two glasses of wine, she doesn't get any deep sleep whatsoever. No wonder I felt shabby when I was drinking wine all the time. Anyway, right, okay, so what was my first step into biohacking? Right, so my first step into biohacking, I was literally crippled with depression. I was told by the doctor, I didn't want to go back on antidepressants because it made me flatline, not very creative, not not happy, not sad, just, you know? So I... Um, I got told to just get out and have a have a jog, eat in moderation, you know, and that'll be fine. That's what I've got to do. Well, I found that really futile because I couldn't even get out of friggin' bed. Never mind, go for a little jog, join a gym or a, a mum's group. I was just, that is just not happening for me. Anyway, I came across uh, an article about cold water. I know. How can that help me? Because I am I love pills. I've been brought up that way. My mum used to pop pills for her back pain. She popped pills for her depression. And she, and she had insomnia. So I'm from a pill-popping family. And it's always the best way is the medical way. But um, it wasn't working for me. And bearing in mind I wasn't drinking at this point. I'd already given that up, but I was still depressed. So anyway, I thought, what else have I got to lose? Let's try this cold shower. So I am the queen of central heating. I hate being cold. And one of my followers actually mentioned, she said, I hate being cold, but I think that actually makes it work faster. The fact that you're getting into a cold shower and everything in your body's telling you not to, but you fight against it and it's five seconds and you're in and you've done it and it does something to your self-esteem. I don't friggin' know what, but it does something. So I started doing that and I was just going in cold and then having a hot shower. And now I've learned that you go, you can go in, go in cold, get your face really wet, and then you get this mammalian diving, uh, d- diving instinct, reflex, mammalian diving reflex, where you go <gasps> like that. That kicks off the cortisol and everything, adrenaline. So boom, 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 straight away. You've got all these hormones pumping around, like in fight or flight and everything. And then when you learn to calm yourself down, so you've got to breathe out more than you breathe in. That humming activates this vagus nerve. Stay with me because I know it sounds a bit wanky, but it does. It activates the vagus nerve and that kicks in your parasympathetic nervous system, which gives you those nice, calming, nice, warm, cozy feeling hormones for free. For free, without putting strain on my liver by taking antidepressants. So I did that over a week and I thought, friggin' hell, I'm onto something here. This is better, I'm feeling a bit bit of swagger. I wanna get up a bit more, you know? I'm not looking forward to it, don't get me wrong, but I'm feeling a little bit, my day's getting a little bit brighter. Then I discovered Dave Asprey. He's the guy who invented the huge phenomenon that's bulletproof coffee. And anyone who is struggling with obesity, whatever, depression, type two diabetes, read this guy's story. He is so on it. I mean, he's taken it to an extreme. He's got a farm in Idaho or something like that. I mean, obviously, I live in central London, whatever. But just 
by reading what he discovered about fats and how I could get rid of the brain fog by using decent fats in my coffee, which incidentally I didn't drink because it used to make me jittery, that changed my life. So the cold showers, the bulletproof coffee, and soon after that, I got into paleo eating, realizing that grains give you grain brain, and they're not good for you, and that God knows why the, um, uh, the FDA and people like that say that you need to have all this tons and tons and tons of grains and fiber is bollocks, because it's just a huge industry. So then I started switching into a more paleoithic type diet, the brain fog lifted, then I started tackling the gut with the bone broth, and everything started slotting into place. The great thing about biohacking is two plus two equals five. The returns you get from making two small changes is fivefold. Honestly, you do a couple of things before you know it, you're like, fucking hell, I could do that. Then I can do that, then I can do that. Before you know it, you're walking around like a dickhead like me, but not arse because I'm gonna sleep like a princess this evening. But do you know what I mean? You just get into it and then it becomes a fascination, then it becomes part of you. Listen, I am the most superficial human being in the, on the, in the business, but, I love pretty things, I love nice things, I like scented candles, but if that has got a toxic ingredient, I know it's gonna make me fat. Yes, a candle is gonna make me fat because my liver has got to detoxify it. No, 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 no. If I'm gonna make myself fat, it's through what I eat, through my own pleasure, not someone's net profit. Thank you, rant over. Um, okay, emotional eating. Okay, right, so that'll probably bring me on to sugar as well. Emotional eating is a tricky one because it's a lot to do with boredom for me. It's a lot to do with stress for me. So if I have a row, say I've had a row with my dad, my ex-husband, my husband, uh, my kids, whatever, I walk straight to the fridge. Without even thinking, it's automatic. The fridge door opens and I'm fuming. I'm like, what the fuck can I from? Just, that's it. That's how I am. I've always done that. And I, because of this book, told me why. So when we start, when we get stressed, we're in a state of fight or flight. Your body's like, <gasps> can't cope, can't cope, right, okay, let, let, let's get ready to fight, let's go, let's go, let's go. Now then, my brain is telling me, you need to calm down, I'm fast, because we're not under attack. So the fastest way to calm down is to eat, because when you digest, you kick out serotonin, and that calms down that cortisol reaction. So basically, it's just, it is biohacking, you're just hacking your hormones, but when it becomes a habit and everything you've got in your fridge is processed food with processed oils and bags of crisps and Haribos, you're gonna reach for the stuff you're also addicted to. So it's all right if I'm stressed or angry, whatever, if I go to the fridge and I get some of pretty much everything that's in there is gut healthy. So if I wanna do that, if I wanna digest and calm myself down, it's fine, I will do, but I'm not gonna pick up something that's gonna trigger me into addictive eating. So, I don't know about you, but if I have a hobnob, a hobnob is not, no. I don't have one hobnob, I will have 100 hobnobs. And I won't stop thinking about, if I, if I know there's a half full packet in the kitchen, I won't stop thinking about it, particularly if I'm watching telly, so I just have to eat it all. And that's not my fault. If you're the same, it's not your fault. Hobnobs have designed it to do that way. It's called a sweet spot. They invest billions, billions and billions and billions to get the right level of fat, the right level of sugar, the right level of spice, the right texture, just so we keep going back for more. It's just like crack. You know, you're not gonna stop thinking about it until you've eaten it. And it gives you diminished returns. So what would have given you a lot of pleasure at the age of, 10 doesn't at 50, but you've still got that habit and that brain set. So how do we stop it? Okay, I think it's an old Weight Watcher saying, but if you bite it, write it. Right, so when I was doing a, a gut sort of cleanse type thing, the lady uh, told me to write down on my phone, like on a spreadsheet, which is just horrific for me because I hate admin, write down everything I ate and the effects of what they caused. Did they cause brain fog? Did they cause bloating? And just doing that 
gave me the insight into how much I was picking. Whether it was a couple of nuts here, a couple of crisps there, a bite of someone's butty there, I would have to write it down. That really helps. Then you see the magnitude of how much you're actually putting away. But that's, we all know that. But that's a really good skill to keep, particularly while you're in the house on your own. Just go for it. Don't bother dieting. Just go and see how much you're actually putting away. But another thing for sugar cravings is glutamine powder. Okay, so you get it in a company called High in Nature. It's in a pot about that big. And you get half a teaspoon. And it's a, it's not, it doesn't taste particularly nice. It just tastes a bit like flour, actually. And you get half a teaspoon. You put it under your tongue, uh, sublingually. And you leave it there for 30 seconds. Straight away, that amino acid gets into your bloodstream. So that will take care of the actual physical sugar craving. Okay, it doesn't taste like sherbet, it doesn't taste like sweets. So what I do, and what I did do when I was in, because I'm a sugar addict as well, as soon as I've done that, I would have a fat, some fat. So if you want to have a big tablespoon of really, really good olive oil, the governor's got incredible olive oil. It's super expensive, but oh my God, it is an elixir. Um, or you could just have a tablespoon of MCT oil or, or have a bulletproof coffee, get some fat in you immediately. Then go upstairs and clean your teeth. And that is an old supermodel slimming hack. Clean your teeth and it should go. And by the time you've pratted around doing that, hopefully you've calmed down. But I find it's a really good tool to know the reason why I'm stressed and looking for food is because my body just wants me to calm down. So if you can, if you can lie on a spike mat, that's not for me because I'm like, I need something now. That's why I have bulletproof coffee or if you don't have coffee, I have a Rubis tea um, bulletproof. That's just like, or any herbal tea, whiz it up with some fat, add a bit of stevia if you have to, just don't add sugar because you're going to kick off a craving, your insulin's going to go up, 25, 30 minutes later, you're going to come back crashing down and you're going to feel like shit and you're going to be on the ravage again. It's all about being able to fast forward to how am I going to feel in half an hour after I've finished eating this? I'm going to want more, aren't I? It's just like what I had to do when I was drinking. Fast forward. What will that first drink do? It'll lead me on to another one. It's exactly the same principle. Try not have the first bite. But if you can't help it, put these little biohacks in place. It's all about sort of planning, getting all the stuff. Because the science is there. It's just that we don't get told about it. Well, I'm telling you what I did. And it made it a lot easier because I friggin hate cravings. I hate it. I hate not having what I want. I hate not being able to do X, Y, Z. I hate it. I hate needing something. So if that need's gone, happy days. Right, now then, let's see. Um, Molkasan and aloe vera in the morning. This is one of the first brilliant things that are this cheap that really help my bloating. So you get Molkasan from like... They don't sell it in Boots for some reason, which is dead annoying. They don't sell it in Holland and Barrett either, I don't think. But you can get it on Amazon and you find it in like the weird old pharmacies, you know, like the old school ones. So Molkasan is really good and you mix it with some aloe vera. It's just like a whey and it's like got all the bacteria in. And then you had the aloe vera as well. So you get about, let's see, about that much Molkasan and about that much aloe vera, add a bit of water, drink it on an empty stomach. Now someone was saying, would it break their fast? Listen, if you've got bloating, the first thing on your priority is to get your gut healthy before you start panicking about breaking fast or anything. I would just get this every morning. I'd do it at night as well. Just get this stuff down you, it really works. Give it a week, morning and night. And if you're intermittent fasting, happy days. Get some bone broth down you as well. Don't worry about you not technically fasting. Remember, this isn't a religious fast. This is a fast to give your digestive system a break for you to be able to burn fat, not carbs, for you to be able to heal your gut. So if you do have something nasty, you don't blow up like a balloon because your gut is intact. It's got a nice amount of bacteria in there that can break down this nastiness get it out and you don't look six months pregnant when you go out for dinner which I've done so many times and it's just it's horrible it makes you knackered okay planet paleo first of sleep for energy right well I think that's more or less it I've got through quite a few things here so I'm just going to mention right so this is what I'm taking at the moment hunter and gather I've got a really nice British band a uh, band British brand who've got these, uh, I'm really into sort of organ meats and everything because it's high nutrition, it's from a food source, 
and it doesn't have any sort of chemicals in. So they've got liver and heart. I'm not likely to be cooking liver and heart here. So this has got massive B vitamins in. So if you're a bit squeamish like me preparing food and everything, get these down you. Really bioavailable because they are a food source. It's what our ancestors have been brought up on, you know? Apple cider vinegar tablets. Ooh. Um, yeah, I think it depends what, the, what they're made out of, I suppose. I mean, apple cider vinegar is another really good one at night. So if I've been out for dinner and um, I've eaten something that doesn't agree with me, like some gluten-y bread or some horrible bloody sauce that's got a load of crap in it. I mean, my body's quite reactive, so I, I know when I've had something a bit dodgy. What I'll do is I will take about... 10 activated charcoal tablets, and then I would swig about that much apple cider vinegar in a load of water and drink that down, and then I'll clean my teeth and go to bed. I find that's the best way to settle my stomach, particularly if, I'm, if I've inflamed it. Apple cider vinegar and activated charcoals. And activated charcoal are dead cheap, you know? You can pick them up anywhere. They're really, really good for bloating. Um, what else? What else have I got here? Also, I can't recommend this enough for people who can't deal with coffee or caffeine, L-theanine and lemon balm. This is a really nice brand, Viridian. You can get it on the high street. I mean, we just order online nowadays, I guess. But this is great if you think you can't have coffee or caffeine. This is what is in green tea. Um, I mean, I have to have this with green tea anyway because it gives me the jitters, it makes me anxious. So if you're going to have a coffee at like five o'clock in the evening like i have make sure you have one of these as well or two and you know what it's an, it's really it gives you a calm energy not a, a raging anx anxiety energy so that's another superb biohack um what else oh yeah and i talked about enzymes check out this company as well for enzyme um digestive enzymes because so many of us particularly with leaky gut we've all had 80s diets this sort of thing we've all knackered our guts we're not absorbing the nutrition from the food like we should be i i just don't absorb iron properly i have to take pork pancreas to absorb the iron because i reckon i've damaged my pancreas back in the day you know so i mean we're not all the same we can't all have the same supplements but there's little tricks that you can find out i mean when we all get back to normal, I definitely look into getting regular blood tests. There's a lot of home kits at the moment. I'm gonna try a few out and find the best, best, cheapest ones and get some, you know, some real, real data. So I know exactly what my body's doing, exactly what my blood needs, not what Kim Kardashian needs or anybody else, what I need because I'm totally different to them. And that's exactly what you need to do. Target it, otherwise you're wasting your money. And supplements are expensive, you know, seriously expensive. Right, okay, well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, that was nice, they only meant to do half an hour, but I can talk. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Um, no, I don't think there is, so I'm gonna finish off my kombucha and I'm gonna put my glasses on and I'm gonna go do a Netflix binge. Have a lovely evening, everybody. Mwah.